They say vanity is a deadly sin. Trump wouldn't wear a mask because of how it might make him look. I wore one in this back area, but I didn't want to give the press the pleasure of seeing it. He was worried it might affect his spray tan. He was obsessed with how he looked in a mask. I had a mask on, I sort of liked the way I looked, and I thought it looked okay. It looked like the Lone Ranger. He sacrificed hundreds of thousands of Americans for his vanity, and then he sacrificed the people closest to him. Now they're all sick. Stephen Miller, Kellyanne Conway, Chris Christie, Ronna McDaniel, Kaylee McEnany, Mike Lee, Hope Hicks, even Melania. But then as soon as he got home, he took off his mask again as an active coronavirus patient who is deadly contagious. 215,000 people died because he didn't want you to see who he really is. This is what Donald Trump looks like without the spray tan and comb over. This is the ugly face of vanity. This is Trump unmasked. America, you deserve better. You deserve a president who cares about you, not just himself. This is Br'er Caleb, PhD. My pen name is of a citizen of the other kingdom and the PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. We will continue to dig for a proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. Three blind mice and the plight of my struggles. If you could see me, I wish I could share with you my most profound feeling for you might think I don't understand, you think nobody knows the trouble you've seen. The test of a first-rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposing ideas in mind and still retain the ability to function. The next best thing is to take you along my journey and share with you my discoveries. As I wish I could put my arm around you and pull you in his divine presence, the Shekinah glory of Adonai God, I cannot. The insightful ability of an educated, anointed mind can grasp all non-essential dynamics that one must bring together to form and embody the higher vision of reality. The secrets of how to survive temptation. It would be best if someone cares for you, and occasionally that can make all the difference in the world. Everyone needs a man of God for encouragement. Honestly, a stranger is anyone who is not your friend. Secrets of how to survive temptation. A deception protocol channel is a place where we will be dealing with some sensitive issues which others often avoid. The word stupid does not exist here for there are merely untutored individuals. I am a professional PhD from Canada. And my class was minimal, as far as I recall, I was the only one in my class that qualified for the Desert University. This course took me about 40 years, of which 12 years in a legal battle in the high court as they like to call inside maximum security. New and improved spiritual warfare on boogers. You know I even took a course, new and improved spiritual warfare on boogers, I got a diploma to prove it. It occurs when the object clogs the nostril, making it difficult for air to move through the nasal passage. Your child may make whistling noises when breathing through their nose. A stuck object would cause this noise. Br'er Caleb, PhD. Tough times never last, tough people do. Good day, this is Br'er Caleb, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Dicker. Folks, as we are facing reality, the United States has their president, Mr. Biden elect, and Kamala Harris, vice president, first female. Remarkable times are developing right in front of our eyes. Yet, what really concerns me is the fixation of the body of Christ. We have discussed before that there are about two and a half billion Christians, people that call themselves believers, people that sincerely seek the presence of the Lord. They were told that President Trump was going to be re-elected because the word of God had shared with them, and I'm talking top people, people that most of us know, Paula White, Pat Robertson, Sid Roth, John Hakey, Kenneth Copeland, and many more people. People that have mega churches. 
Why is this happening? What is wrong with the body of Christ? Or is there even anything wrong with the body of Christ? Do we have it wrong? Now, first of all, how do we get that number of two and a half billion Christians all over the world? There are a couple of agencies, Christian agencies, do, that send this on a regular basis all over the world to let people know. So this is not something I came up with. So I'm not going to debate the numbers, how many broken down in Christianity, Roman Catholicism, Protestants or Pentecostals or the conservative Bible Belt, Baptist, Bapticals and whatever. That is something else. But what I want to focus on is the body of Christ or Christianity as we know with over two and a half billion people that are believers, whether their leadership is focused too much on expansion than on structure. Listening to Martin Luther in his 95 Thesis of 1517, that is 1517 AD, that is five, 700 years ago, his refusal to renounce all of his writings at the demand of Pope Leo X in 1520 and the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V at the Diet of Worms in 1521 resulted in his excommunication by the Pope and the condemnation as an outlaw by the Holy Roman Emperor. Wow, that's a mouthful. Now many of you might be surprised to say, well, I don't really know what that means. That is so long ago, or maybe history is not your strong point. But that is the point. See, I spent 18 years in court in Canada because I said no to a fellow that was a friend of mine and he happens to be the head of the Freemasons in London, Ontario. He lived in a nice big house, 15,000 square foot home, which is the equivalent of 1,500 square meters. He had everything that he wanted, but when he heard the developments in my business, he wanted that. And when I turned him down, he told me that I would regret it because he would show how much power he has. And I knew about some of the stuff of Freemasons, but never paid attention to it. I should have. And so the next couple of years, in total 15 years, 1997 to 2015, I was in court. And if I wasn't in court, I was in jail. And we lost millions of dollars to lawyers. And when we had no more money, we had to develop, defend ourselves, which we did. And we won a couple of times on appeal. And that got us basically back to the Netherlands. And now that I'm here, writing down in a book, Deception Protocol, the Prodigal Son Blueprint, I realized that this was a spiritual development. It was not just an experience of a businessman generating lots of money, losing it all because of blah, 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 blah. That is actually not really important. What is important is the development, spiritual development. What can we learn out of this situation? The same that I see with the church, the body of Christ, the leadership. See, when Jesua HaMashiach, to most of you known as Jesus, was on this world, he started a movement. But was he supposed to start a movement? All he came for was to do the will of God. And what was the will of God? The will of God was to hold up his commandments. When I say commandments, the law, the word of God. Because God's word is law. Why do I say that? Because when God created this world, what happened? This world started spinning and it stayed there. And up till now, with all our computer powers, we can still not understand what God did, how he created this, and how it is possible that we as mankind can live. Now, there are certain dimensions. When the interruption came by Satan, the devil, or Lucifer, the 
angel, the archangel, the fallen one, he was concerned because he saw that Adam and Eve were happy. They were in the presence of the Lord, the creator, and there was something else happening. God personally was training Adam and Eve. He took Adam in and Adam was learning how to become like God and live forever. And when Satan saw that, he needed to do something and he used a snake. Is it true? And every time that we hear, psst, 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 I tell you, be very careful because Satan did something that most people overlooked. See, we are built body, soul, and spirit. Now, the mental aspect, the P, the physical aspect, actually, was they had a body. They could talk, they could maneuver, they could name names, so they had the mental capacity. But now the spiritual capacity, the moment they sided with Satan, God broke that. He had to step in because otherwise there was going to be a disaster. See, God's rules are like the worlds. When they were created, they were set to be for infinity. And now we, as mankind, we are wondering, why is all this happening? Why is the president not elected? We heard from God. Folks, there is too much witchcraft in the church. When I say too much, Oh, folks, I don't even want to start yet. See, witchcraft is running rampant in the church, in the body of Christ. And we allowed it to happen. And this is why I hold the leadership responsible. I was a leader. I was an, an evangelist. I was traveling around teaching people the gospel. I was raised in a family, a Christian family. Folks, I did all the schooling and stu studying and blah, 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 blah. But the more I asked why, in several occasions, the first time I got excommunicated, I was wondering what in the world is going on. The second time when it happened, I just, hmm, too bad. The third time when it happened, it really hit home because I had sacrificed everything for this group. And then slowly, but surely, over seven decades, I'm 70 years of age now, 2020, I was born in 1950. Over seven decades, my eyes opened slowly that this world is not run by God Almighty. This world is run by Satan and witchcraft is running rampant in the church. That's why Satan can falsely tell people, thus says the Lord, because they are listening to Satan. And why am I saying this? I hate to say this. I wish we would understand that we need to repent. And Mr. Trump, who has his own peculiarities, his own problems, I understand that. But he was enabled by the people, the leadership, and mainly the church of God. When I say the church of God, I mean the body of Christ. I mean everyone in general that followed him blindly because we were doing the same that happened many years ago. And I go back to 325 AD, the convention or con when we met in Nicaea. See, in Nicaea was a major meeting with the Emperor of Rome, the first century believers that had been killed off over a period of 300 years. If you do not believe, and then the Emperor said, you will follow my degree or else. And or else meant you were thrown in the arena, eaten by the lions or attacked by the lions or killed by soldiers. Folks, we have as a society, as a Christian society, as the body of Christ, allowed Satan to come back in. And now we, as a society, the leadership, quote unquote, we have to repent and find out why we allowed paganism, Moloch, and all that prayer and worship to Satan 
and our church. God did not order a new church. God ordered to follow the law, to fill the fulfill the law. God said to follow the way, the truth, and the light. See, what is holding us back? What is making us ineffective? And I don't care how many hours you speak in tongues because it has no value. The true value is when you repent and come back to where God wanted us to be. Is it too late? No, it's not too late unless God tells us so. But if you want to repent and ask God for insight and understanding, then we will see what God meant. The way, the road less traveled, the narrow way. And when we do witchcraft, you say, but what do we do? We have no witchcraft. You pray with your cross in your hands. You hail Mary's. Do I have to continue? The Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Folks, you need to re-evaluate what your principles are. God spoke and he said, I want you to follow the way, the truth, and the light. And what did Jesus do? Yeshua HaMashiach. He was the first one. He was our brother. He is not God. He is our brother that went to the Father, our Father. And so as he went, we are supposed to follow him, not make him another God and deity because the Emperor of Rome or Mr. Trump or Mr. whoever is in charge of the body of Christ. And even the Pope, folks, you got it in, a, you are in a pickle, a big pickle. It took me 70 years to understand this. So don't think it is easy because we have been so brainwashed that you think that's impossible. But going back in business, I stood for almost 20 years before judges. And when I learned in, in the legal profession, you got to go back to the evidence. And if the evidence proves that you were wrong, then you are guilty. If the evidence proves that you are right, then you are free. Now, if you have a corrupt judge, that's a different story. But reality is that evidence will prove that Yeshua HaMashiach came to serve God. There is one God and he fulfilled the law. So we have to go back to the law. And if the law means that we are fulfilling the law in the love of God and for the love of God, not because we want to kill and destroy, but because we love the Lord. And we understand now that the Ten Commandments are the Ten Guidelines. That is the minimum. That is how the kingdom of God works. And if we cannot love each other, if we hate each other, if we pursue each other with lies and cheating and money 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 then you are folks on the wrong track because the kingdom of god is an awesome place please hear what i see i wish you god bless you and remember tough times never last but tough people they do thank you bye for now
used to give all I have I'm used to get nothing back Wherever I go, it's the same There's no excuses, no one to blame Sometimes I can understand how it can be So hard to stay out of pain But with you everything has changed Even though we both stay the same Would you hold me tight?